Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what happened in the Europa Conference League over the past two rounds with a heavy emphasis on match day four. As you know I could not make a video for match day three so I will mention the results but I will mostly focus on the results of match day four where we have the first teams already qualified. One of them I have here is Eintracht Frankfurt of course. Final positions are not all yet secured, but it, uh, it's in, in the group Frankfurt and as we'll see, Pauk also have already qualified for the next round. And there are a few more teams that we will mention. Uh, I think the two big teams in that uh, entire comp competition are of course Fiorentina and Aston Villa, especially Aston Villa looking strong. But I think between Frankfurt and those two here, we may get the winner unless some of them found the Europa League wins, but in the first two editions we had always Conference League winners. Uh, as always, I have watched highlights for all of these games, so I hope I can be telling you a little bit more than usual, but I have not really been following uh, because, you know, A, I was at the Europa League game for my last, which is a video that will come uh, the, uh, then after this one. And also uh, on TV, they put a little bit more focus on the Europa League, which I think is a shame. To me, the biggest result over these past two matches is, of course, Klucks getting the first European win with a 3 0 over Olympia Ljubljana. That, I think, is a result that's worth talking about. Unfortunately, yesterday it didn't go as well for them. And I would say, let's get right in. I want to go kind of by the uh, group by group again. Um, and we actually start with group A. And you see here that the first two results were actually from match day three. We have the big win from Klaxvik. But we also had Lille beating Slovan 2-1, which put Lille in a really good uh, position for advancing. And then yesterday, uh, yes, Ljubljana got the return result. There was a red card for Klaxvik weekend. There were a few goals for Ljubljana were uh, chalked off in the end with Tatem and Ljubljana got their win. I think it was also the first two goals scored for them in the group stage. So big one. Uh, Slovan earned a draw against Lille. Uh, I think the most notable scene was a really uh, weird penalty call that was then taken back because of an offside before. But the way uh, Umtiti took down the Slovan uh, attacker was rather rough. Should have been a penalty, if you were to ask me. Uh, in Group B, again, had no problem with Breda Blick, uh from Iceland, uh, beating him at home 5-0. Uh, and then also in the return, like, it was the perfect 3 to win because then early Breda Blick turns around and that was a game, if you have not seen it, it's in the highlights. I mean, Breda Blick is already playing in uh, green and white and then Ghent in their neon jer uh, jerseys on kind of a brownish grassy field. <laughs> It was a feast for, for, for the eyes you would like and then uh, again turned around and win it. Overall 3-2. Uh, uh, in the same group we also had Maccabi Tel Aviv against Zoria being postponed for obvious reasons. Two teams from war-torn countries at the, at, at, at the moment. So uh, this will be played on the 25th of November. However, the return leg was uh, played. Maccabi Tel Aviv was the much better, better, better team uh, controlling the game for large spots and seemed to be the second strongest team from that group uh, being in a good shape. I mean, two points ahead of Soria at the moment, but I would uh, assume that they will make that. Uh, if we go over now to Group C, uh, Victoria Pilsen get two wins over Dinamo Zagreb. And for me, this is one of the big stories is how bad Dinamo Zagreb is this season. This was a team that was Champions League regulars, even pushing for potentially advancing to a round, round of 16, but then at least going into the Europa League. And now uh, they are sitting last in their group uh, and Victoria Pilsen is, is already through. Victoria get the win away from home. And then yesterday, yes, it was a little bit lucky because Dinamo got a late equalizer that then was chalked off. I think it was again for an offside. But Pilsen so far spotless in, in this group. Whereas Dinamo Zagreb, one win and three draws. The other game, Astana is holding a slight advantage over Balkany at the moment because they win the head-to-head, -head, uh, winning away at Balkany uh, and then at home only a nil-nil draw. But that group is rather wide open at this point. Only Pilsen is through and then 4-4-3 four, four, uh, between the other three. So maybe Dinamo Zagreb still has a chance. However, you know, you better get a winning first. 
In Group D, we have Club Rouge also having booked their ticket because they win the head-to-head -head against Lugano with Club Rouge being on 10, Lugano now on, on 4, Lugano cannot catch them anymore. First place is not quite yet secure, but it looks quite good. Uh, they win in uh, Zurich because Lugano play their home games in Zurich because their ground is not UEFA already. And yesterday, yes, it was messy. There was a penalty in there, but uh, in the end, they get it done. Uh, much more interesting, though, is Besiktas here. Similar like Dinamo Zagreb, Besiktas have only a solitary point. Yes, they lost this crazy game at home to Lugano, but they lose twice to Bode, 3-1 in the first leg, and then now 2-1 at home. Being 2-0 down relatively quickly. And you know, Besiktas have a few players that you may recognize. I mean, uh, chief of them is Ante Rebic, who came from Milan, but the way he played play Milan, I also understand he was not all that great. Let's move over to Group E. This is the first one of the groups where we have big name teams. And this what there was a big name duel between Aston Villa and AZ. AZ that just were in the semifinals of the Conference League and are now already in danger of being eliminated thanks also to losing to Sorinsky Mostar away from home after having a 3 0 halftime lead. Yes, this was one of these crazy games. Against Villa, they stood no chance. I mean, they were four, losing 4 1 the first game. Yesterday, they held a 1 0 lead, uh, were actually well in the game. But then Aston Villa turned around, I think Oli Watkins get a late winner. Uh, and Legia is also quite good in, in, in the rank. They are getting two wins over Srinsky Moscow, 2-1 uh, and 2-0. So Legia and Aston Villa might get out of, the, of, of this group. And this Legia team is a little bit overlooked, I would think. Group F is probably the most interesting one. Uh, because we have three teams that are vying for the top spots. Fiorentina... Played Cukaricki, uh won at home, uh, thumping 6-0. And, you know, Fiorentina at the moment is a little bit in a rough, rough patch. But that, that, that was an uh, outstanding result. Uh, and away from home, yes, they're a little bit lucky with a penalty and so on. They get the 1-0, which allows them now with those six points to take top spot of the group. Whereas Ferencvaros and Genk um, are much, much closer. Uh, two draws, a 0-0 uh, in the first one. And yesterday... I think Genk was largely the bad, better team of Ferenc Varsh took, took a lead, but it ends in a 1-1. So at the moment, you would think uh, advantage for Fiorentina, but Fiorentina have to play against each of them, and they better get at least a win out of there if they want to advance. Group G uh, looked interesting, but it's already all decided. We know already who the top two will be in Pauk and Eintracht. Uh, Pauk actually got a crazy comeback win. Uh, in Aberdeen, they were 2-0 down in the second half and then they turned around with a stoppage time penalty win, I think, through Schwab. So that was a pretty big win for Pauk because that put them more or less on the uh, step of qualifying. Yesterday, yes, they turned around the early deficit, but Aberdeen e uh, equalized uh, in Greece with a free kick. And so it's a 2-2 uh, but that's enough for Park to already qualify. And Eintracht Frankfurt, after getting a uh, uh, similar to Fiorentina thumping, Helsinki 6-0 at home. Also kind of a little bit of a messy 1-0 away uh, win. But Frankfurt and Park are already through. It's now between first and second spot. And that probably will come down to the head-to-head. -head. I think in the next round, as, as we'll see in Frankfurt, uh, if Park get a draw out uh, of uh, there, they will win the group. Frankfurt will need to win. And then a last group that, that, that we have is between Fenerbahce and Nordgel, uh, Fenerbahce and Nordgelland, Ludogorets and Spartak Turnova. Uh, remember that Nordgelland actually had a pretty big win over Ludogorets a little bit uh, earlier on. Um, not so much against Spartak, 2-0 uh, away from home. And then yesterday, actually only a 1-1, one, one, so a little bit points drop, whereas Ludogorets and Fenerbahce, uh, win their respective home games with 3-1 uh, for Fenerbahce in the first one. Ludo Goritz winning 2-0 at home. Actually, deservedly so. And stay in the running at group that's also really, really tight. I mean, Spartak Tronova is uh, gone, but Fenerbahce 9, Nocella on 7, and Ludo Goritz on 6. That's where we are headed at this very moment. If you look at the overall favorites, I mean, it's no surprise that Aston Villa is the big favorite and then Fiorentina and Eintracht is more or less what I said. Lille, uh, I will say Lille, Fenerbahce, outside chances, but we don't know yet who is coming down from the uh, Europa League. And when you look at the, the, the section with all the zeros, we have Union saint gilles Ajax, potentially Brighton, although I don't think uh, that the Brighton will come down. So there are some really good teams. I was surprised that you even see Sturm Graz in there sporting, potentially. So, you know, um, the field might widen once we get into the knockout stage. 
And if you look now to the upcoming games here, the matches from groups A to D, um, I would say Besiktas and Club Rouge, but this is uh, has nothing to do with anything anymore. So uh, there's not uh, too, too too many great games in, in there. I think Astana against the Dinosaur has the most riding as Bode against Lugano in a way. And on 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 the other side, Aston Villa against Legia Vaso is I think a big one. And we already said Eintracht against Pauk for the group win. Fiorentina against Genk I think is also a rather interesting one because I would imagine that Ferenc Varos will win a two. Chukaritschki. I slowly get it done. So that's my review from the last two rounds from the Conference League. Please, if you want to add anything, um, please do so in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about the games. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!